Hey everyone, uh, what we're going to be building today is currently way off in the distance there so while we fly to it I just want to address a couple of questions I know are going to come up in the comments. Uh, the first of which is when's the next over engineering and the answer to that is eventually. Um, I've been pretty busy lately and I haven't been able to make as many videos as I'd like but I haven't given up on over engineering there will be more to come so stay tuned. Um, which brings to the next question, which is what have you been up to? Um, and I've been busy coding. I've been coding for a Minecraft multiplayer PvP game. Um, and it's called Fortress Wars. It's a team-based game that, in which two teams build a fortress at the start of the game to protect their beacon. And then they choose um, among 18 different PvP kits that I've custom coded with different abilities to fight each other, fight the other team and try to destroy the other team's beacon. Uh, it's a lot of fun and um, I've, I've been had a lot of fun making it as well but I'm going to put uh, links in the description if anyone's interested in checking that out. But let's get to today's build which is a one wide silent hopper clock and these are really handy and I needed uh, this one for a build that I'm working on for a future video and I needed a reasonably long timer and this is perfect because you can precisely calibrate the timing of the clock based on how many items are in the two hoppers. So let's get to building it. To build this you'll need some blocks, two hoppers, five redstone, four redstone torches, two comparators and just any item you like to put in the hoppers and the number of items you'll use here will depend on how fast you want your clock to be. So we're going to start off by putting down a block and placing a hopper against that block and then placing another hopper against that one while holding crouch and then on top of these two hoppers we're going to build an RS gnaw latch and this is a fairly common RS gnaw latch design and it's fairly compact so that's it for the RS gnaw latch. Now the good thing about building this directly on top of the hoppers is it already provides signals like opposite signals to these two hoppers. You'll notice that when this one's on, this one will be off. When this one's on, this one will be off. It means that as the RS gnaw latch flips back and forth, back and forth, items will only be able to flow one direction or the other direction. Now what we want to happen is for the RS gnaw latch to be set and reset whenever one of these empties. Now to detect that we can use a comparator and if we put a torch on the output it'll mean that whenever this hopper empties this torch will turn on. When that happens it will activate this part of the RS gnaw latch and prevent any items from going out of this hopper because now that it's empty we want it to actually fill up. And we want to do the same on the other side. So when this hopper is empty this torch will turn on and it will set the other half of the RS gnaw latch and that prevents any items from leaving this hopper when that gets empty. So when this empties it will completely fill this one and then it will go to this one back and forth. Now all there's left to do is put your items in one of the hoppers. Now each item you put in is going to add 0.4 seconds to each cycle. Um, and that's the time it takes for the all the items to go from one hopper to the other. So it's 0.4 seconds one way and 0.4 seconds the other so the total cycle of the clock is 0.8 seconds per per item. So I'm, I think I'll just put four in. So that'll make a um, 3.2 second total cycle clock. Now there's two outputs we can take out of this. This is the 3.2 second pulse. So it's just going to pulse every 3.2 seconds with four items in there. Um, you can also take an output from up here and that is on half the time, off half the time. So that will be on for 1.6 seconds and on for 1.6 seconds. So it depends on your application really as to which of those you choose. 
Of course, you would only use this clock if you wanted a longer timer than a 1.6 or a 3.2 second clock, because um, you could do a much more compact short clock with just repeaters or whatever. Um, but if you filled up this hopper completely, uh, you would get a timer of 256 seconds per cycle, so just over four minutes. Um, so it's quite a good compact clock for you know long timers. I actually built this for a larger project that I'm working on, so you can look forward to a video on that when I'm done. And uh, But for the meantime, if you're interested in checking out Fortress Wars, the Minecraft PvP game mode that I've been working on for the last few months, I've put links in the description to the servers and to the website. So I'd love to see you on there. I hang out on there quite often. So if you want to come say hi and have a game, uh, it'd be good to see you. But until next time, thanks for watching.